And welcome to the DJP Live, guys, of December. Uh, special treat today, if you didn't notice, of course, we got Alex on with us. Uh, we're going to be discussing the dashboard today, the new dashboard that Alex uh, and Troy worked hard on, our developers worked hard on getting out um, to you guys. Um, we're going to briefly cover the settings and a few of the things that you can do in it. Uh, but most importantly, we want to uh, field questions from you guys and take care of questions and answers with you. Uh, again, this is also being recorded. So if you guys uh, have to step out early or whatever, there will be a replay that will be available on YouTube um, tomorrow uh, or later today. So I got to figure out when we're going to launch that out. So, But uh, hopefully everybody's having a great December so far uh, as much as possible. I know uh, holiday events are not taking place as much this year as they have in years past. But um, anyway, kind of getting things started. Uh, if you guys have not seen the dashboard overview video on YouTube, uh, that is definitely a great place to start. Uh, we're going to basically kind of cover some of those things here with a few additional features that have been added since that video has been posted. Um, but to kind of get things started, Alex, do you have anything that you want to start off with? Or if not, we'll just jump right into quick overview of settings and whatnot. I think the only thing I'm going to add is depending on which account we're using, are we using the demo or are we demo using account? Yeah, we'll use demo account. Yeah, we use demo. Okay, yep. cool. Um, in that case, yeah, no, nothing to add. Everything that's live to everyone is on the demo account. So perfect. I was just going to say, in case you see anything you shouldn't today, guys, you might get a few sneaky previews of some redesigns and little extra bits that we're working on. Absolutely. You shouldn't really see. So we'll kind of get started here. We'll take a quick look at the dashboard. Um, Real first, how do you get the dashboard to load when you log in? Uh, it's gonna be underneath your setup application general settings. And down here in the bottom, you're gonna see it for this employee, for the master administrator, where does the master administrator log in? Uh, you can choose calendar, dashboard, or the events list. Um, so if you choose dashboard, and uh, of course, I don't know why my mouse is highlighting stuff, but click save settings. When you log into your account, you're gonna go right to your dashboard underneath master administrators. Um, and then real quick, Alex, as well, is that the same for admin and salespeople? Essentially, yes. So for admins and salespeople, which has been rolled out this week, potentially last week as well, um, if you go to main menu and then employees, main menu at the top and then employees, yep. and then select your admin or your salesperson. I'll select this admin and, here. Yeah, and then go to full view. Um, from here, you can configure the dashboard for each individual employee and to set up where it logs them in automatically, go to edit, go to edit first page, and then yeah. settings. settings and first login page options and then first login page. So it's identical to the master admin setting to a degree. We've just added the dashboard into that drop down. And at the moment, this is only for admins and salespeople. Correct. Um, standard employees will be coming. We've just got a few more tweaks that we need to make for uh, individual employee permissions and things like that. Perfect. So that's how you get it set up to when you log in, whether you're the master admin or for employees. Now, uh, if Alex, can employees, uh, whether an admin or obviously admins can, but salespeople, can they set their own availability or uh, visibility when they log in? No. So okay. for basically... For permissions reasons, what we've done, we've made it so that admins can make changes to employee accounts, um, but salespeople and employees can't configure their own dashboards at this time. So while we're still beta testing this and sorting out all of the permissions and all the extra bits, admins can set and configure dashboards on a per employee basis. Perfect. So only the admins can do it. So that's how you set up uh, an employee dashboard. So the master admin has to set up the salesperson or the admins. Uh, oh, no, dashboard. Any admin. admin. Any admin can. Any admin can. Yep. Yep. And then um, they will set with that if that's the page they'll log into um, through that employee settings here. And again, once again, that's going to be underneath edit. Uh, well, actually, let's take a step back. You're going to navigate to that employee. Let's say we have uh, Amanda here, our fake salesperson. We're going to full view and we're gonna click edit, and then we're gonna to go to the settings tab. And then down here, you'll see first login page options. 
uh, similar to what you see underneath the general settings for the master administrator. And then, and then to configure, if you click on save. Yep. And to configure, configure the dashboard, you'd click down on there, and then you get a blank dashboard layout, which will save for that employee. So say, for example, you want Amanda to have layout six, but you want, uh, let's go with a different name, Steve, to have layout two, that's possible. Gotcha. So you can select which widgets each employee has access to and which ones you want them to be able to utilize. Awesome. Of course, of course, like if those employees have a certain request, like, oh, I want to see my email on front load, you can go do that. If another employee wants to see their events list, you can go do that. There's tons of options. Perfect. We'll just throw some random stuff in here for Amanda right quick. And this will be Amanda's dashboard. And oh, we hit that back. So when we go to Amanda as a master administrator and we click full view, you'll see that the widgets that we've selected will appear down here and what layout selection we have her on. Um, and we click preview, it'll give us a preview of what her dashboard will be. And that's gonna be different from if we go to our dashboard up here as a master administrator. You get set up for your employees as well for you. To configure your dashboard, there's two places that you can go to. We can either click the dashboard icon up here in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, you can click main menu dashboard. Um, and then when you're on that screen, you can click the gear icon or you can also get to the master administrator's dashboard settings by clicking on setup, application, and then dashboard. Um, you'll see, of clicking, course, six, oh, go ahead. Sorry, clicking on that cog, guys, just a heads up, it will edit um, the dashboard of whoever you're logged on as at that time. So if you're logged on as master admin, it will edit the master admin. If you're logged in on your employee account, because I know some of you have your own employee admin accounts, it will edit that account. The dashboard setup menu option will only do the master admin. No, I'm lying. I added code last week to fix that because that was a bug. That will do your logged in one as well. Gotcha. Yeah, I fixed that last week because I broke that. Sorry. Um, and then so it'll edit the as your who you're logged in as when you click the cog icon. So again, there's a, uh, you have six different layouts. You can label or give a name for each different layout. So if there's certain layouts that you wanna have stored or if you wanna play around and decide what layout you like best, um, you can enter that name. When you select a different layout, you wanna make sure you select use this layout for this view, for this person, uh, or for yourself as a master administrator and save it and that layout will be used when you go to the dashboard. You also get this nice little handy dandy notification that, hey, you didn't add any widgets. So you may want to add some widgets or select a different layout. Um, There's six layouts in total. Um, mm -hmm. Originally, I did way too many um, and it got way too confusing. I'm not going to lie, guys. I've sat there for weeks just designing different layouts. But we narrowed it down to six different layouts to start with, um, which we think generally cover most basic dashboard layouts for what I think most of you will need. Um, obviously we're open to suggestions going forward as we always are, um, but see how you get on with these. I think most of you will find they, they work fairly well. Absolutely. Um, now, as far as the uh, widget options that are available, you'll see that there's small top widgets that are available up here, which are mostly statistics and totals. And as far as booked events, revenue, things like that. Uh, there is a widget here that is a large wide, large wide widget, which is the only one available currently as status view. And that'll again show you uh, just an overall view of your current statuses where you can click on it, be taken to the event list with that uh, status. Um, then you have your large wide widget, which is your calendar widgets, as well as uh, inbox messages, SMS hub, IMAP, email, things of that nature. Um, and then medium. Uh, size widgets uh, that have that you can set up for event lists, comparisons, tables, um, daily agenda, and then uh, other widgets as well here at the bottom, as far as different tables, charts, and things that you can play with. Uh, the best part is to play with 
to find out, play around with them, see what they look like and what will work best for you with the information that you wanna see when you log into your uh, new dashboard. Just a heads up as well, guys, that some of these are dynamically generated. So some of the widgets won't use your live data when you're building them. So when you're in the builder, um, some of them will, some of them will use your live data, um, but things like the tables, as you can see here in next upcoming events, we've got a client name with Bob test name. Um, it's just random data just to show you what it's going to look like as a rough guide. Absolutely. Except Bob test name is a, uh, oh, Bob last name. <laughs> it's a oh, have we actually fake got one, Bob yeah, last name? In, the, in the demo account. So you'll see some interesting names and event names inside the demo account. Um, and a couple new things that we'll talk about real briefly before, again, we get to probably mostly questions uh, regarding the dashboard. Um, if you ever are curious as to what a digit does, a widget, a widget does is click the widget descriptions box and that'll pop up in a new window. And then I'll show you a brief overview of what each widget type um, covers and includes. Um, as well, we have the actions button now. So if you ever come across an issue, uh, you can reset the dashboard. Uh, you can also that, import just dashboard a heads up settings. As well, guys, sorry, just going to jump in on that one. The reset dashboard button wipes all of your dashboard as that logged in employee. So if you've got something set on layout five and one, both layout one and five will get cleared for whatever employee you're doing that for or for yourself. Correct. So again, it's going to clear all of them. So if we save this, and we come in here, for example, we click actions and say, I need to reset my dashboard. Well, we have one and, uh, what did I do, four? One yeah. and four. We click reset dashboard. It's gonna reset all of them. So one, two, three, four, five, and six are, are now gone and blank and you can restart to build. However, you can also back up what you had. So for example, I just exported the dashboard settings that I did have, and now I'm going to import them and it's just a matter of copying and pasting the code that was um, laid out that we had. Um, and now when I save, that dashboard is back. So again, to do that, you can click Actions, Export, Save Dashboard Data or Settings. Copy this code that's provided by clicking the Copy to Clipboard button. And then best rule of thumb is put it into a text editor like Notepad or something like that that doesn't have... Uh, um, formatting in it. Um, then you can save that. You can share it with another user um, if they really like your dashboard settings and they'll be able to import it into theirs as well. Hopefully as time goes on, as we add more widgets and more customizability. Other there. Is that a word? Customizability? We're yes. going to go with that. As we add more customizability, um, like some of you will have different dashboards or for example, you can add custom HTML code. So you can write your own widgets to a degree. So you might build your own widget that you want to share with someone else. You can whack them across just that whole dashboard export. Bang, there you go. Give that to another DJ that you want to have them use the same dashboard. They can import and away you go. Absolutely. So as far as the setup, settings and adding widgets and things of that nature. Uh, that's a quick, simple overview of that. There's not much further to dig into that. Alex, do you have anything else that you want to add as far as setting things up? Uh, things that users need to look out for when setting stuff up that we haven't talked about yet? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we've covered most of that. Um, I think it's just a case of, you. yeah, you do. You need to play with it and just see how you get on with all the different features and all the different widgets. Uh, for example, I see at the moment Fletcher is using a fairly square screen. Um, so, for example, the large widget for the calendar, let's go with that. Um, that's best without the side panel. But for some of you with wide screens, like I've got a 2K huge monitor and two standard monitors for testing on, but I use my big one. I can fit the whole of the calendar and the side panel. So I would choose a side panel. Fletcher would choose without the side panel. Absolutely. So, and you can make it and you'll be able to see if we, when it, what Alex is talking about. Um, let's make this bigger. 
I just said, yeah, that it's just a case of having a play and seeing how you get on with it, really. This calendar view with side panel, why is it not loading? <laughs> I don't know why it's not loading the side panel. Anyway, let's switch to a different calendar and then come back to it. There we go, there's a side panel. Let's go back to that month view with the side panel. There we go. So you'll see what Alex is talking about, the side panel here. If you have a smaller display, that side panel will drop down below that calendar in the middle. If you have a smaller display, um, you may want not want to, like Alex said, use the side panel, use one that does not have a side panel. And you'll see those options broken up here. You have calendar with side panel and calendar with no side panel. So if we take the calendar with no side panel, since we're on the smaller one, it fits a lot nicer uh, on the dashboard and the screen. Also, the other thing, guys, is you don't have to have all the widgets configured on the dashboard. No. So say, for example, you just want some top locks, calendar, and two bits on the side. Brilliant. You don't have to have the wide widget filled in. Um, you don't have to have the ones at the bottom. It's completely customizable. So you just clear out the widget. Let's leave one at the bottom just to show what it will look like. Sure. Um, and then it's completely hidden away. There's nothing put in there. And yeah. it's as you would have structurally seen it. The other thing as well, this is mobile responsive um, to a degree. Obviously, like widgets are fairly hard to compact down at times. For example, the calendar, that's always going to be fairly big, but we try to get it in as best we can. Yep. Um, so it should work fairly well on most devices as well. Absolutely. You should be able to see it scaling down. Obviously, the calendar, because of the data, it'll be a, it condenses down to a scroll bar, but it's still there, fully functional. So there is one widget, by the way, guys, as well at the very top called admin notifications, um, which is a great widget. That is basically not removable because if you notice in calendar, we've also got like the software messages and the admin messages on the side. We needed to put that somewhere in case you didn't have the side panel set on calendar. So we've added that as a top widget at the top, which will only show for admins. Um, and it gives you your to do lists and any software messages that are required. Obviously, if there's no notifications, doesn't show. It will show for the next uh, week or so because we have just loaded out a new one today. I think it was today. What's the date? 16th? Yep. Yep. As of today, you'll see a red alert that basically says, check your scheduled emails. Um, so every year we get people go, oh, you sent a scheduled email on Christmas Day. Because it's completely automated, we can't always guarantee that it's not going to go out on Christmas Day. So we've put a big red bar there that says, go check your settings just in case. Clicking on that will take you to the report for Christmas Day to show you which ones are going to go out. Absolutely. Perfect. It will also do the same if you've got SMS configured as well. Cool. Yeah, that's an important note to know for those uh, uh, celebrating Christmas here in the US and that work with clients around the world uh, celebrating Christmas Day. Um, you may not want to send them a message that day. Uh, chances are they may not see it. So important. Um, so I think the only thing I've got left to say on, on this little bit here is if you do spot any bugs um, or you've got some idea, well, right now let's work with bugs. First of all, let's see if we can get this completely bug free. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you do spot any bugs, post it on the support forum. Um, I'm more likely to see it on there and I've pretty much developed this from scratch. Um, I don't often check the user to user group, um, mainly because it's on a separate account. So yeah, pop it on the support forum. I can access that anywhere in the world. So I can see that as and when, and then I can deal with it from you, for you from there. Awesome. So I think at this time, guys, now's a great time to, uh, if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat box as well, unmute your microphone um, and ask the questions away. Um, especially we got Alex here joining us for this DJP live. Yeah, how about it, guys? You've, you've got me here. Like, 
Yeah, I've even got the green screen up and everything. Like I've gone all out this time. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, making that big. Um, I see I a one. couple of people chat in. There we go. Uh, when when you were copying and pasting the code for somebody else to upload, uh, I would assume that's just to say which widget is which. Like it doesn't give any information or any of the, like it's not copying what I would see, but just copying where they. Yeah, would it's go. not it's not it's not copying the data. It's just copying what widget is where. So each widget has, uh, without going too techy, each widget has a what we call a, a widget ID. And we split that up into bits so we know what is what. The only thing that might get taken across data wise is if you've put custom HTML widgets. So if you've built your own widget, because that's stored in that code area. Um, so what did we do, Fletcher? Didn't we build a weather widget? I'm sure yes. we built a weather oh, widget. I, yes, I built a weather widget somewhere. Um... I built a custom widget. Is it still in here? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, so that HTML code that Fletcher added would come across out in the export, um, but none of your personal no, information, anymore, but I can like show no you no event information, anything like that will get exposure, anything like that. Awesome. Yeah, I'll show you, um, for example, what I had in here. Uh, where is it? Let's just go with this one. I'm not going to lie, it's a pretty cool widget. I wanted to integrate it myself, but it just didn't get time. And so I thought, well, custom, you lot can build your own. Like oh, yeah. if you don't like my one, eh, go get your own. So I had this little bit and this one, I had put the top 50 billboard songs in it, but this one greets me when I log in based upon the time of the day it is, tells me I'm awesome, whatever, but it also has my local weather. <clears throat> um, and you can, I, I like the custom widget because there's a lot of things that you can do. So, you Let's can't access out. database information. Just a heads up on that. You right. can't access database information for security reasons. Um, one day I might be able to make that easy enough to do, but it's so you can build basic, simple widgets. Absolutely. So let's uh, give that a try real quick uh, to answer your question, Dennis. We're gonna, I'm going to export this save dashboard. So you'll see in the code here that this is a custom widget right here. I really um, hope that came out okay. Hang on. Where you can't see that. Um, this is a custom code. I don't know if it's going to transfer. So let's find out together, guys. It's a good opportunity to find out oh. together. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. Because it converted a lot of the HTML to... Uh, it's converted a ton of the HTML. I did not test this. Sorry. That's all right. So we're going to run this real quick. Let's... Uh, I'll have this fixed by end of week. Oh, look at that. And imported it. It looks like it's working good. I think I just peed my pants. I don't have to work extra hours. <laughs> so uh, it looks so everything except for custom. If it's a custom, it is going to export that data. So obviously, uh, before you go to share it with somebody, you want to make sure. And actually, I'm going to uh, make this a, a whole roundabout thing. And anything in DJ Event Planner that you can share with other users, whether it's the dashboard and you have a custom widget. Um, if it's the planning forms, if it's a document, you know how we have document sharing and we have planning form sharing, make sure before you share that document that you edit it and delete any personal identifying information. Yeah. hundred percent with that on it. Um, because as other users will import it, there's some things that another user might overlook and forget to change. And that could cause some problems for you going forward in the future. And, uh, for example, company names, we've had that before. Company names, Oops. payment links, uh, yep. website addresses. So make sure that and anything before you share it with anyone outside of DJ or inside of DJP, um, whether you use a document sharing, form sharing, um, or this custom widget, um, you would put it, uh, I told you I had a brain fart. <laughs> just don't, just make sure you delete it and look over your stuff real well. That um, would be a pretty clever way to make some extra income though, is to hide your payment <laughs> information in other people's templates. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell you this guys, but about five, six years ago, we actually had that happen. We had someone share a document and it had someone else's payment link. 
Um, and it was when I was introducing some of the new payment gateways. And uh, we're getting complaint. We're getting this complaint. And it's someone else is getting my money. It's like, what? Uh, it's actually ah. happened. It's actually happened recently. Um, Did it happen? Has it happened again? Yes. So uh, that's why that's a great opportunity to, to talk about that. And I'm actually grabbing that's why I'm a link for so you guys glad we have quick. Fletcher. So um, glad we have Fletcher to help with that. Um, Chris, yes, it is possible to configure the dashboard to be the default view when you log in. Um, so to do that as a master admin, you would go to setup, application, and then general. Um, and there's a master administrator landing page option there now. Yep. And you can yep. change that to dashboard. Yep. And to do it on a per employee basis, you would go to menu, employees, select the employee and then edit. And under the settings tab, there's the first login page option there. Um, and yes, I'll get that weather code, that weather HTML code off of Fletcher and we'll get that. I just, yeah. So you probably don't have the chat open, Alex. I just posted where I got the weather widget from. Uh, it's actually from a website called weatherwidget.io. I did work out where chat was. So just okay. a heads up, guys. I don't <laughs> use Zoom at all. Never used it. Crash course last night at midnight, my time. So it's not bad. Um, yes, I've worked out where chat is. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, if, if you're looking for that link, it's in the chat as well. There you can, and you can get it for your website, whatever. It just creates a widget that you can utilize for your local area weather. Um, so I'd give you the code that I have, but I'm here in Detroit. So unless you want to see Detroit's weather every time you log in, I'd suggest making your own, uh, which it's snowing here today. So there are uh, quite a few out there as well. Um, I stole the HTML code for one when I was trying to build a widget widget code um there's one out there where there's tons of different graphical interfaces and um there's loads of them absolutely yeah. loads if you just google search something like weather widget api or something like that they'll normally provide you with tons of stuff absolutely and there's some really cool ones out there i think uh, we can get them that to another time but i'm sure that can be added to um a portal basically to identify the user's location. So when they log in, they can see their own area weather, but um, that's a little bit further advanced. We <laughs> do do time. geolocation, but not so, right now. I've right. got it integrated, um, but it's only working on the employee check-in, check-out because it uses your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still trying to work out how to integrate that into desktop browser to be able to bring it across where you guys can just grab that info for sure i have a question sure so this is andrew i'm in uh just so hey, you know, i'm in grand rapids michigan oh. no snow on the ground here so we're good yep yeah i'm on uh, the east side so <laughs> there you go. um so i've been playing around with the dashboard and the uh revenue for booked events what's super important to me as the owner of the company is to see um you know a point in time this year versus last year is there a way it seems like it's not like you can filter it, but then you can't save the filter for a future. Like when you come back, it goes back to this year, previous year. And I know we're close to 2021, but could you have your dad, like I want to compare sale 2019 to what I have booked of 2021 because he wants to forget 2020. Is there a way to fix that? Or once you go into it, you can do a filter but you can't save that. The next time I come back in, it goes back to year over previous year. Are we talking about the top blocks or the widgets? Yeah, the top blocks, like the, the one on the right there. Yep, the revenue mm -hmm. for booked events this year. Yeah, uh, so I have two of mine. So I have mine like previous, this year and last year, but that's showing 2020 and all of 19. Is there a way that you can customize and say, I want to look at, I want to compare 2019 to 2021? to, you know, like essentially pick the point in time you want to look at. Gotcha. We have just added some new ones. So you could potentially do, um, okay, change it to 
there's no like dupl- there's no dual value blocks right. at the moment. They're all individual. So you could do last year and then next year. Right. Um funnily enough, me and Troy were talking about this about adding a potential to add custom dates. Um it is certainly something we are gonna look at doing. Because if you click in the block, you can you can then filter and then take a view, but save that filtered view for future when you come back to the dashboard again. What I'd, yeah, what I'd like to do is so, um, do, 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 Fletcher, if you go mm-hmm. back to dashboard for me, yeah, um, rather than me take control, I'll just guide you. Um, go to builder for me. Ideally, what I'd like to do, and this is something we've looked at doing, is if you click on the drop down at the top where it says revenue for booked events oh. last year, yeah. We're going to, I want to add a new one in there where it says revenue for booked events, custom date range. Yes, that would be helpful. So that's what I'd like to end up doing. And then you see how you can change your background and your text color. Yeah. There'll be start date, end date. Right. Yeah. I would just like, I would also like a little more flexibility in there. That's just, again, very short time working with us, but it's super important when I click in. I look like, you know, like right now, I can't see the future until january 1 <laughs> you know for when it says this year or or last year there's no you can't customize that point in time so Absolutely. that's just my initial feedback sure. cool 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 yeah i'm i'm all over the custom dates trust me um it's definitely in my uh my list i've just joined it down again just be like remind me again Thanks. um i can't give timelines i never can give a timeline because just in case i break stuff right. which happens a lot if you see an error code, it's probably me. Sorry, guys. Perfect. Thanks for that question and that feedback, uh, Andrew. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Andrew. Anyone else? Anyone else got any uh, queries or anything? I can view the chat so I can see anything in there. <laughs> I think it's fairly straightforward. It's fairly simplified. Um so far, we've had no major bugs apart from last week, where if any admin made changes, it adjusted the master admins dashboard, but I've fixed that. That's been rolled out. So if your dashboard got changed last week, sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I think that is pretty much it. I have one other question. Sure. Go for it. it may- oh, I think he froze. Oh, we froze up. Yeah, Andrew, I think it's stuck. Everybody else looks like they're moving. I see Chris working hard. <laughs> I'm loving that background, by the Maybe way. Like the, the whole company logo right behind. Me and Fletcher have to use green screens and hide yeah. the crap behind us. <laughs> I think we've lost Andrew. Yeah, I think Andrew. Uh, hopefully, he'll come back here soon. Andrew, if you can hear us, just... Yeah, disconnect and log back in. Um, anybody else with any questions about the dashboard uh, with the settings, the widgets available, uh, feedback? Wow, it's like tumbleweed rolling through. Yeah. Hello, this is Hello. DJ Naz from Derby in England. One of hey, my Naz. best friends. Hello, Mr. Naz. How are you? In fact, on the YouTube channel, my picture's there, a big rotund, rotund gentleman with Alex and... Uh, the big crew when we we're in the, the UK. I, I we were the is... A team. We were the first. <laughs> yeah. We were at the first ever BPM show here yeah, in the we UK. Were. We were. And, and I love DJ EP. I just want to say, I actually looked at this a couple of days ago because I thought, oh, I watched the little video. My wife is the boss of the company. And she has so many questions. And this is great because I'm going to go through it with her and customize all the information she wants. So at a glance, instead of me having to go and search for it, 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 it just makes it so much easier. So thank you. And I know you work hard at this, guys, but it really is very useful. So thank you so much. And I did put a private message to you. You didn't reply by Alex. Saying because I didn't know how to. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't understand Zoom. I'm a Skype boy. <laughs> That's all right. I we'll am forgive s- you. We'll let I you am off. Skype and Facebook Live. That's it. Well, your experience has been extended by Fletcher and Troy. I know. I'm impressed. We might have to bring this into work. 
Hey, listen, keep keep up the good work though. Being serious, it's um, without this, I couldn't run my business as a multi op. It just I couldn't keep tabs of it, you know. Uh, and I just love it. So thank you very much for everything you do. Say hi to Troy as well. That's me done. I'm going to shut up. Oh, thank you. Mr. Naz, one of my best friends in the world. I have not gone and seen him in such a long time. Yeah. And now the UK is going back into lockdown. It's going to be another bloody few months. Oh, phew, um, thank God. <laughs> hi. Um, Andrew, sorry, we lost yeah. you for a minute there. So Alec, Andrew's back. Uh, he wants to curious. That. Oh, there you are. So, yeah, so my question was, again, I started using add-ons. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to, instead of like booked revenue is a total event, is there a way to break it out to say, okay, the main thing was DJ services, but then also the revenue placed on an add-on of say photo booth or uplighting, things like that? Not yet, but that's a bloody good idea. Um, okay. Definitely pop that in the beta forum for me. So like as a widget idea, and then, yeah, that's a really good idea. If we can work something out on that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm all up for that. Absolutely. And speaking of the forum guys, if you, uh, to get to it, obviously, you're going to find that underneath support options, support forum. Um, if you haven't connected to the support forum yet, you'll have to register the first time you uh, visit, which is simple as creating a username and a password. It is a different login than your DJP login. Um, and then for the uh, support forum items, you want to put, put it underneath the beta testers forum. Um, and that's where we're going to keep all the information right now for the dashboard. Because again, the dashboard still is in beta testing. It's again, what we're doing is open beta testing versus closed beta testing. So everybody has access to it because we feel we'll get a better response and feedback with everybody being able to utilize it versus just signing up to be a beta tester. So, Also, guys, I've just realized one other thing. So talking about custom HTML and widgets earlier on. Um, the reason why I added the reset dashboard is because if you enter custom HTML and you haven't got valid HTML and you accidentally put in an extra div or an extra P tag or something like that, you can break the whole layout. Um, Let's try that. Please don't. <laughs> please don't try and break my code. I already broke it once. It, so, I've had a ton of people break it recently with custom HTML. It's like, ah! It seemed to work all right with a with an extra P tag. Um, I've probably got some fallbacks in there just in case. Probably. But if you can, just if you do screw up your HTML, that's why the reset's up there. If for some reason you can't reset, post on the forum, I'll ping you a direct link, and you can just click that and reset. Oh, let's try that custom div. Nope, that didn't mess it up either. So, oh, well, I guess it did mess it up a little bit down here. Oh, there you go. Boom. <laughs> mess with it. Div class, mess with Alex. <laughs> Worked out. Please well. don't, guys. Please don't. <laughs> but it allows me to go back in and save it. And let's see what happens. Uh, should be back to normal, right? Yeah. So, cool. Um, Anyone else, guys? You've literally got free reign to ask anything you want. <laughs> Within reason. <laughs> I haven't had it. Look, it's it's twenty to seven here. I haven't had enough beers yet, sir. To, to uh, uh, so, uh, how you doing, Alex? This is George. I'm from uh, the Michigan area. I actually live in the backyard with uh, with Fletcher. That's right. What's hey up, there, George? George, nice to finally put a face to the name. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, now, of course, I'm going to keep this towards the dashboard because some of these widgets. Um, can they be for just the salesperson that's logged in so yes. they can see the pending events they're working on, not the whole company? Yes, absolutely. Um, Fletcher, bring yep. me up to the builder, please. So we're going to come here. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. In the top blocks, we have just added a new thing in the last, I think, week to 10 days, I think it was. Um so this does a, a count of booked pending leads and lost based on the salesperson, which is the person logged in. Mm -hmm. um, from what I can tell, that seems to work fairly well. Is there yeah. somewhere else within the widgets that you'd like to see that? No, that that's great. But now let me ask about um, upcoming events. Um, there are many different statuses that we've got set up. 
Um, right now we have booked and we have booked COVID-19, which are events that canceled their original date and got rebooked. Can I specifically set for my own um, uh, statuses or is it just booked and pending and lost it's sale? Basically, uh, all works on the statuses you set up within the setup. So Fletcher, if you want to go to yeah. setup application event status. So it's whatever's ticked within these boxes down here. So it's kind of to make sure everything is all okay. the same. So uh, I can't just pull up um, just booked events or just completed events, or it'll all be in that one booked. Widget. It would be whatever you've set within the group of booked or the group of lost sales or the group yes. of pending. Okay. Um, right. Definitely something we can look at adding going forward, potentially like a custom status list. Um, I would say best thing to do, as I said to Andrew earlier on, pop that idea like custom status list for widgets as a, a feature request within the beta forum. Um, and then it just reminds me as I come back to go, oh yeah, let's see if we can get the ball rolling on that. Absolutely. May I branch off of that question with something else? Yeah, go for it. Sure. Not widget related, but event status related. When I've been uh, taking cancellations for COVID and I put them as a canceled, their, their status on their end shows up as back to pending. Is there something I'm doing wrong or is there a, a way to make that say something else like canceled or? There is. Um, yes. It's all to do with the wording that is in the client portal settings. So if we go to, I'm trying to remember off the top of my yeah. head here. Website tools, client, website portal, tools, client portal, and then settings. Custom values. Thank you, Fletcher. Yep. And then there's custom values down the bottom. So you can literally type in your status and choose what you want it to show on the other side. That's awesome. I thank you. I didn't, I didn't know that. So Beautiful. really handy. So for example, if you've got COVID canceled or we've got a couple of people with some questionable choice in status wording, um, <laughs> you can choose a more potentially friendly name to go on the front end. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that's how you can do your custom custom statuses and change it on the front end to the back end. Okay. Now, the uh, other question I had is I see that you can import dashboards. Are there pre-made dashboards already set up that I could try out? Or is that like I find another DJ that is using dashboards and say, hey, can you send me your settings? I mean, exactly that. that. It's, it's to share between you guys. Um, okay. We've not set anything up purely because between all of us, all the staff, we couldn't decide which widgets you guys would want. Because um, originally we said, well, let's just set the dashboard as this, 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 and this, and then you guys can go and change it. Mm -hmm. But between us, we couldn't decide. For example, I wanted calendar, but someone else wanted inbox. Um, someone else wanted the SMS hub on there. So everyone has different things. So we've done no presets, but yeah, that's just to share between you guys or to make it easier to duplicate dashboards between your employees. So you could literally design one for master admin, take that code, go to an employee, import, next employee, import, next employee, import, and so on. Yeah. Rather than having to go click, 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 click. So click. my my next question is, um, you know, I've got a layout set that, that I just been, I, I just tried because I don't have um, my actual dashboard set up 100%. I was just playing around. Um, why would we need five, six, seven different layouts when you can only use one? What would that be for? Is that for like employees to, to I can set one up for an employee or a salesperson? It's partially because of two things. Um, one, again, we couldn't decide between us all on a fixed layout type. So we designed six different layout designs that 
allow you to choose the layout design that's best for you. Me personally, I prefer layout two. So Fletcher, if you go to builder for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, so um, each one of those, so each one of those layouts already have different layouts. I didn't yes. know that. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. I thought it, they were all blank. They are. Yeah. They're all blank as in the choice of widgets, but the actual structure is uh, slightly different. Oh, um, I did not even notice that. Thank you. I prefer layout two, just a heads up guys, because it's got two lovely big ones at the top. That sounded wrong. Two lovely large widgets at the top. <laughs> And you can choose basically like two things, like so you could have calendar and inbox at the same I time. I didn't know you knew my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see that now. That's you've completely <laughs> thrown me now. <laughs> so yeah, you can, I, I prefer layout too, just because I feel there's more information being shown. Um, we're going to move swiftly on from this bit. <laughs> no, I like that. Thank you. Um, going forward, though, the second reason why we've done multiple layouts as well is, I don't know whether or not I'm allowed to tell you guys this, I was hoping at some point to be able to do multiple dashboards, but that's way down the line yet, if if at all. I can't guarantee it. Okay. Um, it was an idea I had, but I can't quite get it to gel yet. Real quick, Alex, at the top where it says notifications, you see number five there. Yep. Can you click on that for me, um, Fletcher? Yep. Yeah, you should see it expanded. Okay, not yet. So what um, that is, is on the original calendar. So oh, yeah. calendar was the dashboard. There it is. That was always our dashboard. Okay. Um, that's basically at the side panel, you've got the admin to-do list and the software yeah. messages. It's so that we can give you guys information. So there's there's a uh, um, notification, little warning that's popping up on mine. That's about uh, pending timesheets. And we at uh, a, a point uh, had some people thinking they needed timesheets and I have a ton of timesheets. Uh, is there any way to delete them all? And then that get rid of that warning because it it's in my uh, it shows up as a notification every single day and in there, but yet it's something we don't use. Is that something that was posted on the forum? I think it was. I I did post it, but I didn't get to see an answer yet. Um, I know me and Troy have discussed it, but I can't remember what he said. Um, it's been a long day, guys. It's been a really long like forty eight hours. Um. Well, so you see, you see there, there's like seven of them. I've got like five years of them. Oh, geez. Like, okay. The only thing to do is hit that X button and enter and then move your mouse again and hit the X button. Yeah. And like, can I just delete them all? I remember this. Yeah, I remember me and Troy were talking about this. Um, I know you've got a forum post, so I'll check up on that in a, in a little bit once we're done okay. on here. All right. And I'll follow up on it for Sorry you. Sorry to sidetrack. It was just up in that notification bar. For sure. No, that's cool. This is why it's always handy to get like me or Troy on here at times because then it just jogs our memory. Yeah. Not gonna lie, guys. Tons on our plate. It's all good. Um, yeah, that's cool. Timesheets. Um, okay. Follow up. I do appreciate every. I don't know if people have said it. If I came in late. I know you got a ton on your plate. Um, and, and um, Fletcher's been awesome answering questions for me as I've got phone support. Uh, but you guys have been doing an amazing job. Um, and uh, even though we've had a couple of hiccups, I, I don't think I could run my business without DJ Event Planner. Just to say that, props to you guys. Thank well, you. Thank man. you. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll give you a little history on how I just started with DJ Event Planner. I was actually a user. Um, I ran a company called Alex Entertainment down in Portsmouth and I am awful with paperwork, like really, really, really bad with paperwork. And I just needed something that I could use. And I found DJ Event Planner and it was so unknown here in the UK that Troy was like, do you want to help out? Apparently there's a show in the UK. That's how I met David Nazareth. Um, and we became the face for DJ Event Planner here. And after four and a half years using the software, I ended up 
stopping DJing full time and working for DJ Event Planner full time. I still DJ occasionally. Um, I'm just lazy now. I can't be bothered with the lifting. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, it, it saved my business because like I was losing customers. I actually forgot to go to an event before I had DJ Event Planner. That's how unorganized I was. It was really, really bad. I didn't go to a birthday. It was like, oh. that did not go down well. <laughs> um, so thank God for DJ Event Planner. Like I would not have been able to carry on. And now I actually use DJ Event Planner for non-DJ related things. It's surprising how flexible DJ Event Planner can be. Yes. Like change a few wordings here and there. Yeah. And we got uh, a couple uh, questions coming in on the chats as well. Um, Chris had asked, uh, when he sets the dashboard as default and he refreshes with page, it's loading the calendar. Is that set to be the default thing or is that... Um... Now, Chris, are you uh, at the admin when you're logged in or are you an employee? Uh, I'm an employee. Admin employee. So in your admin employee account, when you debt, when you refresh, it's taking you to the, um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. It's taking you to the calendar instead. Correct. Uh, when I log in, it does go to the dashboard, but if I simply refresh the page, which I, I just do often, I'll just refresh and then it goes to the calendar instead of the dashboard. Could be a bug on my part, not gonna lie. Um, I saw something in setup that says automatically start your session with the um, dashboard. Is that something that's unchecked on his end maybe? I'm actually, Chris, I'm just gonna check your account quickly. Two seconds. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna take a look. So yeah, it should be loading it correctly. Screen. Right, yeah. <laughs> Where, where would that be, Troy, while he's looking at that? Where would that be again where I saw it once and I clicked on it, and now, yes, every time I go, dashboard's the first thing that's shown to me. How, can, so, how do I turn that off? So you're going to go, if it's an employee account, so if it's your admin employee account or salesperson, uh, you're going to go to quick edit or full view and then edit, and it's going to be underneath settings and it first login mm -hmm. page options. Got a bug. It looks like uh, Alex has found a book on uh, that. There. This is why I don't do live videos. <laughs> it happens. Um, oh, I'll there it is. Find Our... it. Okay. I'll find it and I'll fix. Um, because I can even replicate on a master admin and I can replicate on server 21 tester. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, okay, so I can't replicate okay. it. A few extra no. hours tonight. It's all good. Sorry. Yeah, so good. I'm only messing. Um, reload goes to calendar. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I, Mike, you had a question. I'm not sure I understand. You said dashboard. Oh, sorry about uh, my language before. I'm very sorry. Oh, don't. As I said, I'm from I'm from a naval town. You'll hear much worse from mine. Don't worry. I'm being very good. So I moved over from Gig Builder a while ago. I, I love this program. I think it's absolutely awesome. I was afraid for years to, to really move over, but I, I'm very happy with what you guys are doing. It's pretty amazing. A um, couple things. When I go to the widgets, book the events comparison by year. Uh, I know I only started you know, just before the pandemic. So uh, I don't see where I can see I mean, it does have things in there for 2011, 2012. I don't know if that pulled over from Gig Builder, uh, but I'm trying to figure out, I don't even see booked events showing up for this year. So is there something I'm doing wrong? Yeah, what um, you wanna check is your, I'm not saying it's wrong, but double check your event statuses and what you have set as booked over here. So if you have a different status, you wanna make sure all those statuses that you consider booked uh, are checked as booked in here. Um, or else it won't show up in the uh, booked filters. Oh, okay. So I have to go into under setup, you said? Yeah, so setup, application, and then event this status. Event status. Okay. So now I just have booked check there. Booked, paid in full. 
quick look at your account for you. Um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Let's have a look. I'm the widget. I'm not like seeing anything. Hmm. I don't know if I have it right. I mean, I'm still digging around in all this, but. Uh, so application event status. Sorry, guys. I know I've gone very quiet. Um, do you have that in another one here? No. No. Do me a favor. Yeah. Pop it on the forum for me to remind me. I think it might be. Did you have your data imported from Gig Builder? Yes. Yes. You guys imported it for me. It might be a capitalizer. I know this sounds really stupid, but capital B booked is different to lower B booked in the database. But when we write it out on the screen, we capitalize the first letter regardless. So it could be just like a database query, uppercase, oh. lowercase screw up somewhere. Um, pop it on the forum for me to remind me and I'll take a look at that. Um, because I can see you've got events. I can see you've got events yeah. for that, that period of time. So I'm not entirely sure why. Oh. It's because it's done by day. Have you got any booked events today? No, no books today. Just think I've, I'm having a brain <coughs> fart moment. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, okay. Um, under booked events comparison by year, it does it based on a selected day. So I'm on, oh. Mike, I'm on so yours what? at the moment and you've got yeah. Wednesday, December 16th. So you did have booked events in 2011, 2012, 2014. So how do I do the whole, how, how do I do like for the whole year? So if I say, hey, I did, you know, I don't know if it's possible here. It just says by date. If I said, hey, I want to know how many events I did uh, 2019 you know, to 2021. Okay, so in that case, you'd use the by day function. Um, for that one, it does it as a rolling list. And then if you click on the cog, you yep. can select your date range. So by default, um, it will do a week. And also, guys, the dates always start from the start date of your calendar. Okay, so just a heads up on that. Um, so if you've set Monday as your start day in the calendar settings, a week settings in the widgets will go Monday to Monday. If you've set it on a Wednesday to be the start day, it will find the nearest Wednesday and go Wednesday to Wednesday. Oh, okay. um, but then, yeah, that, you can change that to like a year view or a month view by changing the, by changing the date range. Okay, uh, I thought it would just, he would just say, okay, I want to start January 1st, 2019. And then underneath there, I want, you know, to December 13th, 2000, you know, 19 or something. It would show up. Yeah, you can do that. Um, but obviously where it's such a long list of information, that might get a little bit trickier to see. So what you okay. could do... Fletcher, jump on to Builder for me, please. Yep. I don't know if I added it. Layout six. Trying to remember my layouts. Um, and yeah, select one of those. And one of the big ones. And then hopefully... No, I didn't add it no. into that because it went a bit funky when I went too big. Yeah. I'll look at potentially adding charts to some of the larger widgets so that way you can do a large chart showing more information. But due to the, the large amount of information being shown in the chart, a chart probably isn't your best option. Um, Fletcher, any ideas on the best way to show that? Um, off the top of my head, no. And it's probably be thought about and research just because like you said it's a large amount of data that would be difficult to show i think in the dashboard 
Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'll see if I can come up with some ideas. I mean, we're toying with some different design ideas, so I will take a look at that. I want to thank you guys for joining us on this live today for December. I'm sure we probably won't get a chance to speak to a lot of you guys before the end of the year. So definitely want to wish everybody happy holidays. Uh, and of course, a safe and happy New Year's. If you're working on New Year's, of course, as well, please stay safe. We so again, yeah, thanks guys for joining us. Um, we look forward to a lot of great more education coming up next year. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube page, make sure you do so so you get notifications of when videos are posted. Uh, we got everything from change logs to other educational materials being posted and hopefully a lot more coming out, uh, especially here, but a couple more before the end of the year and a lot more next year. So, but thanks hopefully again, guys. Hopefully I'll be uh, joining a few more lives coming forward. Yeah. So Yay. think up some questions. Like, it's not often the developer gets on Facebook Live or DJP Live or YouTube Live or whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah, think up some questions. It's all good, guys. Awesome. Well, thanks, Alex, for helping us out and joining this live. And uh, we'll see you guys next time and, and next year. Again, happy holidays. Have a great, safe, and happy new year. Yeah, thank you. Happy holidays. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye. Take care.